Designing and building UIs with AI has come a really long way, but the relentless open source community never stops innovating, and there's always a new tool that amazes me. Today I found a tool that solves a really common problem that all of us currently face. Imagine you've built a site and as usual there are a lot of small things that your agent messed up. You've got to prompt it one by one to fix them all. Drawbridge is an open source tool with surprisingly low stars that fixes that. And not just that, for me it introduces new clever ways to actually build stuff with AI. All of that said, finding out new ways to vibe code is expensive. So a quick word from our sponsor and then we'll dive in. Lumi. Imagine turning an idea into a working website in minutes. That's exactly what Lumi does. Whether you're a creator, developer, or entrepreneur, you can go from concept to MVP instantly. Here's how. Describe your idea in text or voice, and the AI generates a complete website. Then, apply styling templates to transform it from simple to professional in seconds. It's more than just front-end. Lumi includes a built-in back-end and database, letting you track users and analytics without third-party setup. Plus, it it comes with a smooth login system, perfect for surveys, events, or any project that needs user management. Lumi is actively developing new features, including Stripe integration, and for visual edits, no chat or credits required. And when you're ready, publish with one click or export the code for custom tweaks. Get free daily credits, and with my channel code, unlock an exclusive discount. Click the link in the description and start building today. This is just a general templated app that I made to demo how Drawbridge works and the use case I found for this tool. To me, it introduces these new kinds of workflows. I'm going to open up the extensions tab and from there I'll open up Drawbridge. It opens a menu like this with three sections, to do, doing, and done. Right now I have three tasks listed in my to-do section. These tasks reference certain elements of the UI that I either want to change, remove, or modify in general. You can either press this new button or press C on your keyboard. It will open up this small little pointer that allows you to select any element and then add it to the list of things your agent needs to complete. Let's say we need this text to be modified to say dashboard instead of documents. You just submit it and it's added to the list. You probably saw that screenshot error message down there. Drawbridge also has a screenshot feature where it sends screenshots of the elements you capture, but currently it isn't working. I'm sure that if this repo gets more stars, the author will go ahead and fix it. Right now, given the functionality it's providing, the stars are ridiculously low. Once you've made a list of changes that need to be carried out. The next step is to go into Cursor. This project can only be opened on a local host project that's connected to a specific folder. In that folder, Drawbridge puts this .moat folder. Inside it has its tasks.md file with details about each task. It shows what the element is, what needs to be changed, and the position of that element on the page. To give context on how to use this system, they've also made a Drawbridge workflow.mdc file. This basically tells it how to pick up the tasks one by one and how to track which tasks have been done and which haven't. This is generally the main workflow file of the whole tool. All you have to do to make it work is reference the rule right here in Cursor. But I don't know why Cursor just got really stupid. Every time I tried this out, even though I referenced the file right here, for some reason it couldn't find the file. I don't know why. I tested this with Cursor before as well. It was working and now it's not. I tried two or three times. It's just Cursor. I don't know. It just doesn't understand. Although this is specifically built for cursor with the .mdc file, it can actually be made to work for Claude code as well. What you have to do is copy this file, then create a Claude folder with a command subfolder within it. In that folder, you place this workflow file and simply change its extension from .mdc to .md, then save it. After that, this becomes a slash command for Claude code. You can see that we have our drawbridge workflow command right here. In every chat, you only need to do this once. The tasks and their status updates are all stored inside the taskdetail.json and tasks.md files. Whenever you're working with this, you just need to initialize the slash command once in your chat. Because we dragged it into a new separate subcommands folder, it couldn't find the original files. These files need to be placed right beside it. Even though Cursor couldn't find them, Claude Code actually went ahead and found those files. Cursor has recently started to frustrate me a lot. Anyway, you can see that it has loaded the task data 
and created a to-do list. One by one, it's going to fix all of our errors. Normally, if I had to change something here, I would have maybe taken a screenshot or specified the exact location. For instance, I'd say, there's a document thing in the header and I want to change it, and then it would have done so. But in this case, you build out a large list of tasks and ask Claude to implement them. This is the case with almost any website. Once you finalize it, you're going to see there are a lot of errors and things the AI missed. You always need to have them corrected. This tool is amazing in that case. The first amazing thing is that it processes tasks one by one. The second is that it knows the exact location. I don't really have to do all of that hassle, and Claude's going to implement it all by itself. You can see that Claude has finished now. If I scroll up, you can see the four tasks we asked it to execute, along with the small summary it gave us. First, I asked it to remove the data library section from the sidebar, and you can see that it's no longer there. Then I asked it to turn the GitHub label into a proper button, and now it has been implemented as a proper button. After that, I asked it to change the icon of the lifecycle section to an infinity icon, and it completed that task as well. Finally, I asked it to change the header from documents to dashboard, and you can see that it easily completed that too. I didn't have to explain to it again and again which element I was talking about. There was simply no confusion at all thanks to the positions of the elements. The workflow is really nice because it allows you to do multiple things at once instead of one by one. Beyond that, the user experience is very non-technical. I've also thought up some use cases for this tool that I think are really interesting. Let me quickly talk about the installation and setup process for Drawbridge. It's actually really simple. I'm here in the GitHub repository, and I'll leave the link in the description below so you can get it from there. First, copy the URL to the repository, then clone it wherever you want. It's going to download a Drawbridge folder. I already have that, and inside that Drawbridge folder, there's a folder called Moat Chrome, which is what we're going to use. Next, navigate to your browser and open up your extensions tab. Click on Load Unpacked, then select the Moat Chrome folder. This will load the drawbridge extension, the visual editor for cursor. Once that's done, the rest is quite the same. You open it from the extensions tab. The only remaining step is to connect it to a folder where it will initialize the .moat folder that contains all the task files. Click on this option and select the folder where you've implemented the project running on localhost. You can see that now the folder is connected, and we also have task persistence because the tasks have moved back. Another important thing I haven't mentioned yet is that drawbridge can only be be opened on local host sites. If I open the drawbridge editor here, you can see the error message saying Moat only works on local host. I highly recommend using Claude code with this. Cursor was really frustrating for me. If you want to use Cursor, go ahead, but I think you'll have to manually tell it where these two files are, the task details.json file and the tasks.md file, since those handle task tracking. Other than that, Cursor also works, but Claude performs much, much better. Moving on to the use cases for the drawbridge extension. I found two that really show how this tool can change the way we build with AI. Both of these use cases are mostly for non-technical people. The first use case is building websites. I'm sure you've seen those no-code builders that give you different sections and let you drag and drop fully made sections. Even some AI-based no-code builders work this way. They give you sections, you click on one, and AI builds a general layout for you. I had the same idea. There would be different sections, and people could build their sites using this tool by typing out what they want in each section as they go. This works best for landing pages, because because real apps require everything to be connected and every interface to be integrated. But landing pages are a perfect use case. If I open it up and move into done, you can see I've already given it tasks and it has implemented them. I added git to this and then reverted it back to show you the process. Let me show you how I gave it these tasks. I selected a particular section and then specified what I wanted built for that section, along with details like height or what needed to be included. For example, I specified a hero section, social proof, a problem solution solution section, a feature section, and then a how it works section. I just switched it, and this is what it built. A hero section, a testimonial section, some features, and a section explaining how it works. This shows how non-technical people can easily build landing pages instead of typing prompts and then changing everything manually in the terminal. If you want to change something here, you simply start selecting elements one by one. It will change the text, elements, icons, or logos, whatever you want. You just comment what you need and send them 
them in batches. Another useful trick was using a pre-made design. In this file, I made a designlanguage.md file and pasted how the site should look. In the claude.md file, I showed the design language. I got mine from TweakCN. It's a site where you can get different themes for ShadCN. When you copy the code, you can implement it for any component, not just ShadCN. Claude can adapt it perfectly. If you're building with ShadCN, the integration is seamless. In my case, I chose this Claude design and the text and colors were pulled from it as you can see right here. Now the second use case is actually a functional one. When you're building apps or working with clients, this becomes a new way to show your clients the app. You give them the drawbridge extension and tell them, this is how your UI or functional prototype is going to look. What things don't you like? What do you want modified? This type of UI makes it really easy for them to make changes. All they have to do is click new, select a box and type out what they want changed and it will get changed. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.